All right, so this is 3.4, day two. Um, synthetic division is another type of division that you can use to help you factor really weird polynomials. But like anything, if you have two ways to do things, you need to know which one works and when to use it because not all skills are applicable to all situations. So polynomial long division, one of the biggest pluses is that poly long works on any divisor. There's no limit to what you can have for a divisor. So for example, with poly long, we can take 3x squared plus 3 divided by 2x plus 9, and it doesn't really matter what the divisor looks like, it's still going to work. Um, so it's very flexible when it comes to polynomials. Um, another plus for poly long is that the x's are attached. When you are done, your answer is there. The x's are there, they're all attached on the numbers, there's no guesswork. The, of course, the downside to polynomial long division is it is a tends to be a longer process. Okay, with synthetic, biggest plus with synthetic is it's a shorter process. Works really well for certain situations. Um, the, one of the downsides to synthetic is that your divisor is limited. Your divisor has to be in the form x plus or minus k. Uh, there cannot be a number attached to the x. So like where poly long will work with a 2x plus 9, for synthetic, it's got to be a 1x. It can't be anything else. So it's very limited. Uh, so for example, if you had 3x squared plus 3, if we use synthetic, we could only use it if we were doing something like x plus 9, where the x was by a 1x by itself. So lim very limited in that way. The other downside to synthetic is you have to reattach the x's. So you must reattach the x's. And you have to do it correctly. And that tends to be a little more challenging. So that's kind of your decision-making process when trying to figure out which one to use. So let's see if you've got this. Let's say you've got 2x cubed minus 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 10. And the question I'm going to ask you is, would you want to do synthetic? Can you do synthetic? Or would you want to do poly long? Can you do poly long? That's the question. Okay, so we're gonna do thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes is up, no is down. So on this one, is synthetic possible? Just give me a thumb up or a thumb down. Felix, up. Yes, the ups have it. So yes, synthetic is definitely possible. Okay, thumb up, thumb down. Is polynomial long division possible? Got one more thumb. <laughs> okay, yes, poly long is also possible. Okay, so now I'm just gonna vote, straight up vote. How many of you would use synthetic? How many of you would use poly long? About half and half, and that's generally how it goes, is a lot of people figure out which one they like better, um, and they tend to do the one that they like better. And people that have trouble getting the X's like back on the numbers tend to like poly long because there's not there's a no-brainer, the, the X's are right there. Okay, Roman numeral two. The process of synthetic division. Process of synthetic division. Okay, so here's our example. We're going to do y to the fourth plus 2y squared minus y plus 5 is divided by y plus 1. Okay, so when you do synthetic, um, you have to solve the divisor. So that's your first step is solve the divisor. 
So you're going to take y plus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve it. So if you solve y plus 1 equals 0, you end up with y equals negative 1. This is your boxed number, which will make more sense in a second. This is your boxed number, is y equals negative 1. Okay, number 2. You need to fill in any missing terms. And that's where you're going to have like a 0x or a 0x squared. The other one you got to fill in is the end plus zero. And that's one that people forget on synthetic that your last term has to be a number term. If it isn't, your answer will be incorrect. And that's the one people forget is you've got to have a plus zero at the end plus a number. This one already has a plus five. So that requirement is met. If it is not, you have to sub that in. Okay. Number three, you're going to set up synthetic using the coefficients, which are the numbers attached to the letters. Okay, so your box number is negative one. So we put that a full box or a half box, and then you want to skip a line draw a line. And here's where we're going to fill in the coefficients. Now, what you might consider doing is just with your pencil, this is a 1y to the fourth. That's a negative 1y. We're, we're missing a y cubed, so we do have something to fill in. So for the y to the fourth, we put a 1. For the missing y cubed, we put a 0. That's our filler. For the y squared, the coefficient is 2. For the y, the coefficient is negative 1. And for the numerical term, it is its own coefficient. So we just put the 5. So what's the same about polylong and synthetic is in both cases, the function you have to fill with a 0 term, regardless of which type of division you're doing. All right, here we go. So to do synthetic, I'll give you a second. Your first thing you're going to do is bring down the 1. Then you multiply the 1 by the boxed number and put it under the next number. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. It goes under the next term. Now you add up. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Do it again. Multiply your answer with the box term. Put it under the next number. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. It goes under the 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Do it again. 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. Put it under the next term. Add them up. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Last time, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Put it under the last number. 5 plus 4 is 9. Whatever your last number is, that is your remainder or your r of x. So if this is a factor... then you should get a zero at the end if it's a factor, because you should have a zero remainder. This is obviously y plus 1 is not a factor because I have a remainder. Okay, your fourth and last step, now that you've done the division, this is the tough part. You fill in the y values, and you decrease by a 1y. So I always tell people, think of it like you had a y to the fourth, you took out a y, so what you have left is a y cubed. So this first one should be a 1y cubed. It goes down by 1 because you divided a y out. And then it goes in order, minus 1y squared plus 3y minus 4, that's the body of your answer, and now the remainder fraction. Put a plus, put your remainder on top. Put your divisor on the bottom, so 9 over y plus 1. And that is your answer.
Any questions about this process? Okay, let's do another example. We did one. Let's do another one. Let's say you've got x cubed minus 2x plus 1 over x minus 2, and you're supposed to divide. So remember that to get your boxed number, you take the divisor, x minus 2, set it equal to 0, and solve it, which gives you x equals 2, positive 2, for your box number. So put your 2 in the box. Skip a line, draw a line. Now we look a little bit ahead and we go, ha, huh, it goes x cubed to x. I need an x squared term, so I'm not to fill. It does have a number at the end, though, so I'm good there. So my coefficient is going to be a 1 for the x cubed, a 0 for the missing x squared, a negative 2 for the x, and then my number term is a 1. All right, so bring down the 1. Multiply by the 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Put it under the next number. Okay, go ahead and finish. Finish doing the division. When you're done, look up and check your division. All right, so this was not a factor because we got a remainder of 5. So when you write your answer, remember that you had an x cubed. You took an x out. You're left with an x squared. So a 1x squared plus 2x plus 2. And now the remainder, plus, and remainder is 5 over the original divisor, which is x minus 2. And you've got your answer. Any last questions?